Thank you. Um, thanks very much for inviting uh, me and Claire to be here this afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, what, what we term on the grant applications that funded this, a community time travel audio artwork. But to you and me, it's just an oral history project. Um, but that's the kind of way that we had to, to um, put it across. So the objectives of the project were multiple. Um, so I, I've done a lot of ex, um, community work and so the objectives were tied in with understanding our community and were to really enhance community cohesion in, and particularly to, um, with an emphasis on intergenerational interaction between young people and older people. Um, one of the other objectives was to inspire the young people of the town to actually see a future in their town and not require them to be disappearing to uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh, and that they could actually um, help plan what the town was going to be like in the future. Uh, we're also providing digital technology training for young people through workshops. Um, and one of the main things was to record and curate the stories and the characters of the town, both in the present and from the past. Um, and one of the other main objectives was really to provide some kind of visitor attraction that would bring people to the town. Um, how do I... Which one is it? That one? No. Sorry, can I get a bit of help moving the slides? <laughs> Which one is it? It'll be these bits right here. So. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> okay. Right, there's, only, there's not, I don't have that many slides, but yeah. Um, so, Aylith is um, a pretty rural Perthshire town, which sits on the edge of the Highland Boundary Fault, overlooking the Vale of Strathmore. And it's bisected, as you can see in the top left-hand picture, by the Aylith Burn, which r runs right through the middle of the town. It has quite significant um, heritage assets, including a 5th century church, which you can see the arches, the Aylith arches, is a remnants of. Fort. Okay, brilliant, thanks. Um, we have an Iron Age full hill fort, we've got Mercat Cross, uh, Pictish Stones, Loss Inn, which is purportedly the oldest pub in Scotland. Um, we have some more modern assets, such as a disused telephone box that was um, bought by the community council. And just to tempt you there even more, we have the best fish and chip shop in Scotland as awarded recently this year. Um, uh, but more recently, actually, you might have heard Aylith in the news, in the bottom left-hand picture, we had a major flood in 2015, in the middle of July, before actually the flooding over the winter in, in Balter, neither here, which devastated the middle of the town. Um, and this project is hopefully part of, although it was conceived before this flood happened, is part of the actual um, community effort to bring the town back and, and to bring some... Um, positive thinking back into the town after such a devastating incident. Um, but the biggest um, asset that we have, which this project is, is based around, is actually the people of Aylith. Um, Aylith is renowned within Perth and Kinross Council as being a town with an enormous community spirit. It's slightly off the main road, it doesn't have passing traffic, um, you would have to kind of be going there to get there. And as a result of that, that has advantages and disadvantages, but as a result of that, it has a very strong community that work together um, to do stuff. And the idea of this project was really to capture the stories of this town um, and the people that, that make it such an amazing place to live. So the stories that we're looking to record are living memory, oral histories, that's not recorded anywhere else. So not the kind of thing that you would find written up in a newspaper. We're looking to record the silly stories, the wee stories about actual people's real lives. Um, and we're recording very short memories, two to five minutes um, uh, excerpts. And they come into a number of different categories, uh, which we've curated already, although we've not done the recordings yet. Um, so they would be community... So stories about recreation, about farming, jobs and industry, mysterious stories, people stories, schooled in childhood. And I wanted to give you a couple of examples of the kind of stories that we're, that we're talking about. So I interviewed a lady, um, an elderly lady who used to work, help a, a coalman in the town. And this coalman had lost his arm in World War I. 
But despite that, he was a very active man and managed to get this coal around and deliver, deliver fuel around the town. But, however, she remembers that he had prosthetic arm that helped him do this and he would attach his arm to, to help him deliver his coal. However, there were a number of different arms that were set in different positions and they would hang up in his workshop and depending on what he was doing that day, he would put on the, the, the straight arm or the bent arm. Or, so it's those kind of, sort of strange things that would never get recorded anywhere else. But um, Another story is uh, from a guy called John whose family owned the sawmill in Ailis, which was uh, water powered through the, so it sits near to the burn. And they were the first house in the town to have electricity. And he recalls that the electricity was uh, provided by a hydroelectric system that sat in the burn. And he remembers as a child his uncle disconnecting this overnight. So he would cycle up the burn, up the hall, disconnect the turbine from the electricity, hurl down on his bike and be back in the house in his bed before the actual turbine stopped and the electric light went out. So stories like that are just stuff that is in people's heads that never really gets written down anywhere. So that's what we're trying to capture. The other thing that's a bit different um, about this, and and the reason I put these up here is because although we have lots of photographs in Aelith, and we have an amazing Aelith Family History Project that curates these photographs um, of the town, actually there's lots of stories that sit within these photographs that actually are the kind of things that that are not recorded in any other way. we're also working with, um, so we're working in partnership with lots of different organisations, um, but we're also looking to uh, curate the future. So as well as actually looking at stories from the present about what people's lives are like now, about the past, we're working with young people to get them to imagine what life is like in the future. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pass over to Claire because actually this project sits within a larger programme of work called Catran's Commonwealth, um, which are, is based around heritage as well. So I'm going to pass over to Claire for a second. Which, which is the one? Oh, that one. Okay. Um, so very quickly, uh, this is one of three um, projects that we have spent the last literally three years fundraising for under the banner of Catran's Commonwealth, which is looking to trailblaze new ways of sustaining Uh, creative rural communities and the way we want to do that is to use the program to reconnect people to the concept of commonwealth, um, actually skill up people in all sorts of different cultural and creative practices so that they have more opportunity to have sustainable livelihoods in the area and we also over the long term want to turn the whole area into an alternative learning destination for cultural and creative practices. Um, It's definitely a Be the Change project, even in the three years that we've been developing it, um, that has become more and more consequential to whether we're going to survive and flourish on this planet, this week's news being the latest from America. Um, And arguably the concept of Commonwealth, which essentially means um, the things that belong to all of us, uh, we've lost connection with. And whilst arts, culture and heritage are very much part of that, there are lots of other things uh, that are are part of that too. You can go onto the website and have a a look. Proper community is a Commonwealth, for example. Um, The Cataran Trail itself is an amazing repository of this. It's got fantastic landscape and scenery and history and heritage and archaeology. 1,604 sites of archaeological interest around the trail. Fantastic myths and legends, the King Arthur myth around Aelith and Meagle and the Finn McCool myth up in Glenshee. Um, loads of so-called amateur um, stuff happening and the beginnings of a very strong um, professional commu- uh, arts community as well. Um, so in addition to the amazing, fantastic to hear of Huntley's 100 Objects, and I thought, yes, um, we've got a story of the Catalan Trail and 100 Objects, um, also proposed by the community, uh, finally decided um, by a community panel next April. You can go and read about that on the site. Story box, um, Marin's spoken about, and then finally Common Ground, which... Um, is actually working with an artist in residence, Deirdre Nelson, contemporary textile artist, one of Scotland's finest contemporary textile artists, using new aerial photography of the trail, new place name research for the trail, the 100 objects, working with schools and communities to create a new set of cloths for the trail areas. Um, It's been a nightmare putting all this together. Uh, We probably don't have time to go through all the challenges, but that was one of the things that um, we were asked to speak about. Um, It took twice as long as we had thought to raise the money, about £180,000 is the cost of the three projects. 
Um, really, the principal challenges have been around, um, I think, a collision of worldviews, the classic um, traditional institutional worldview and then the kind of place-based community worldview. And I think that's a really interesting conversation in these times when people are talking about community empowerment. Um, we need to find new kinds of infrastructure, I think, to um, help support the kind of place-based community um, projects that are coming through. Um, I'm not going to go into the, we had a, uh, you know, talk to us afterwards about that if you like, and, and we would love to work with Heritage, um, sorry, Historic Environment Scotland to, to actually excavate that whole issue a bit more because I think it's really important because we nearly gave up, and I'm sure many of you have nearly given up in this room at all, and we've got such fantastic assets to work on, we, we're glad we didn't in the end. So thanks very much, Marion, and I'll be around for a bit, and the website's there, and please get in touch if any of you want to know any more. Thank you.